Nefertiti, the great queen of Egypt, enchanting in her beauty, a beckoning, mysterious gaze which captivated even time itself. Each of us, at least once in their lifetime, saw the famous bust and heard the name of Nefertiti. But very few people know that the queen, whose life was comprised of countless legends, came from a northern country, which we now call Mitanni. In ancient times, it was a large state, antagonized by Egypt and the Hittites, and occupying most of the Near East. This state, inhabited by various tribes and nationalities, created an interesting center of civilization. However, the main and most influential Mitanni ethnos were the Hurdiks. Today, there remains no unified opinion of scientists in regard to this origin. However, it is known that the Hurites were related to Rurartis and belonged to what is termed the Armenoid race. According to the commonly accepted scientific version, the Mitanni originated from the territory of northern Mesopotamia, not far from the sacred mountain of Ararat. The language used in the state of Mitanni to this day contains abundant mysteries and has not been thoroughly studied. However, according to the available information, scientists conclude that the language of the Hurrians and Armenians has a direct relation. After all, Mitanni and the Egyptians, on the basis of these studies, called the Hurites Hara or Hera. Urartu, or the Ararat Kingdom, that inherited them were in the same territory where the Armenian people had historically lived. That is why, already in the 5th century BC, the Greek author Xenophon called this vast territory, in precise terms, the Armenian Mountains. Given the features of the ancient Semitic and cuneiform writings, we have only consonant sounds, and one inserts the vowels by their own sonorousness and corresponding relevance, based on the most convenient pronunciation. The Egyptians, on the basis of this, called the Hurites Hara. It is noteworthy that Armenians from time immemorial call themselves Hai, and in the plural Hayer. The Hurrian state called the Egyptians Naharina, which in translation means the country of rivers. It is noteworthy that their neighbors, the Assyrians, called Urartu Nahiri, which is also translated as a country of rivers. The Hurite kings called themselves Hayer and the country of Mitanni or Metuni. It is known that Mitanni was a multinational statehood, united by the Huri majority. Therefore, there is an assumption that Mitanni can mean one house or one country. In Armenian, Mitun also means one house or one country. In no other existent language is it possible to find similar coincidences with the Hurrian language. Small Hurrian kingdoms began to appear at the beginning of the second millennium BC. The most powerful of them was the state of Mitanni, which reached its peak in the 15th and 14th centuries BC, when a series of wars began with another powerful state of its time, Egypt. An Egyptian chronicle, discovered in 1887, tells about the mutual relations of both countries in sufficient detail. The rulers of the two countries came to understand the mutual benefit of peaceful coexistence and the meaninglessness of permanent conflict. Thutmose IV and Artatam I concluded a treaty of peace and friendship, and to consolidate the treaty they organized a dynastic marriage between Pharaoh Thutmose IV and the Mitanni princess Mutimui. So the daughter of the Mitanite ruler became the queen of Egypt and the mother of the next Egyptian pharaoh, Amenhotep III. Thutmose IV also married one of the country's queens to a Mitanni. Up to 10 years of his reign, circa 1445 BC, Amenhotep III sent diplomats on a matchmaking mission to the king of Mitanni, Tushrat asking for the hand of his daughter, Taduhepi. The princess accepted enthusiastically and with royal honors. The Egyptians were captivated by the beauty of the foreign princess and named her Nefertiti, which in Egyptian means the beauty has come or the coming of beauty. The queen's beauty captivates even today when we see this beautiful bust, the delicate features, the long neck, and the expressive eyes. Upon becoming queen, Nefertiti, however, soon lost her husband, Amenhotep III. 
On the throne came his young son, Amenhotep IV. The new king was in love with the beautiful Nefertiti, and gaining the blessing of the king of Mitanni, married Nefertiti, making her his eldest wife. Pharaoh Amenhotep IV took a new name, Akhenaten, and started large-scale religious conversions that radically changed the age-old customs of Egypt. These reforms led to sharp clashes between the elite and the pharaoh. The new pharaoh acknowledged the single sun god Aten, instead of hundreds of gods who since ancient times had been traditionally worshipped by the Egyptians. Akhenaten and Nefertiti devoted all their life to preaching this new religion. The new capital, Akhetaton, was founded and on the walls of the temples of Aten appeared fine portraits of his beloved wife. A large portion of Akhenaten's writings were also devoted to Nefertiti. In them, he praises her beauty, her charm, and calls her perfect. However, the pharaoh shows no interest in either internal nor external politics. The relationship with the nobility of Egypt and its neighboring states was spoiled. According to some data, Akhenaten was slain in disgruntlement. Soon after his death, at the age of 37 years old, Nefertiti died. After this, for a short period, the son of Akhenaten, born from his sister with the name of Tutankhamun, came to reign. This is the same Tutankhamun who later became the symbol of Egypt. Interestingly, the genetic DNA tests of Tutankhamun and Akhenaten confirm the presence of haplogroups R1 which is characteristic for the inhabitants of Southwest Asia, more specifically, modern Armenians, Ossetians, and some other peoples. In fact, several generations of royal families continued the kinship between Mitanni and Egypt, where Hurrite queens ruled. It is curious that the most interesting periods of Egyptian history included the period of Queen Nefertiti, and largely, through her public figure, humanity has come to learn about the most interesting events of that dynasty. Mitanni civilization has had a profound impact on the culture of the neighboring peoples of Syria, Babylon, the Hittite Empire, and, of course, Egypt. However, the withdrawal of Mitanni from the historical arena at the end of the second millennium initiated the formation of a new state, the Kingdom of Ararat or Urartu, which became the successor of this great culture, and which once again took the position of one of the most authoritative powers of Asia.